Okay, welcome back. Uh, the one thing I'm sure I'm going to make today is a mess, but what I hope to make is I want to put a rawhide wrap around this axe handle just below the head of it, a place that it tends to, when you miss with the bit, you tend to hit the handle, especially when you give these to teenage boys to play with and they don't know exactly how to use them. Surprisingly, most American teenagers don't have much experience with axes. Uh, but I want to use a rawhide lace to wrap it and tie a knot, like I would use on a lot of other handles around here. But I want to use rawhide because it's very durable. Now, we're not to this part yet. We're to the rawhide lace. So rawhide is a very stiff plastic-like material. It's not really leather. It's leather adjacent. It is the hide of the animal, of this case of cowhide, that is just raw. It's had the hair removed from it, uh, and then it's been fleshed to take off any membrane and, you know, remaining animal bits that aren't skin. And then it's just stretched out and dried, and in this case it's been bleached. This is a bleached rawhide. Uh, natural rawhide is... Um, more translucent than this. And I get it in sheets like this. It is, like I said, kind of plastic-like in consistency. Which means it's not easy to cut, but if you soak this in water for about 10 minutes, it becomes completely flexible as if it just came off the animal. And then you can cut it just like you would a piece of leather. It's a little harder to cut, a little bit trickier, but not too bad. But our first step, and where we're probably going to really make a mess, is I want to dye this a different color. I don't want it to be just the rawhide, bleached rawhide color. I want something that's a reddish brown. And to do that, I'm going to get some hot water in a jar. And I'm going to use clothing dye. In this case, um, a red and a brown. The brown's a powdered dye. And we'll see what that does when we soak it. Again, we'll have to soak it for quite a while in a jar of warm water with the dye in it to try and color the lace. Now, one of the reasons I'm not sure about my chances of getting this successfully done is that rawhide is a little trickier to work with than leather. And it's been a few years since I've done so. So it'll take a little bit and maybe a couple tries. We'll see if I can get it done. We're going to put a lot of dye in there. And one of the world's nastiest wooden spoons to stir it up. Give me an idea of what my color is, at least. We'll call that a nice mahogany color. That's pretty good. All right. And we're just going to stuff our lace in there and let it soak. Could be a bit to stuff it in this jar, but it'll come out easier than it goes in. There's the mess I was talking about. Okay, this stuff has been soaking for, oh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I haven't really been keeping track. Um, it's a nice, even color for the most part. There's a few spots that might be a little lighter, but it looks like it's pretty much all even. Nice, dark, reddish brown that I was trying for. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this and go rinse it all out, rinse it several times, and see what it looks like then and decide where I'm going from there. All right, now that I've got all sorts of lace, and it is dyed actually a little darker than I wanted. Probably lighten up as it dries. We'll see about that in the long run. It doesn't matter if it winds up this dark, that's good. Um, and I'm gonna do this very similar to what I've done in the past on tied knots 
It's going to be a little bit odd because this is wider here than it is here. It's going to change shape and size of the knot a little bit, but hopefully it works out the way I'm planning. And I should have more than enough lace to pull it off. It is a little trickier on rawhide to tell which side is the flesh side and which side is the grain side of it. Um, it's very similar to leather in the fact that it has a, a split side and the flesh side is rougher than the grain side. But it's harder to see it. And we're going to wrap, I want about three of the widths of the lace between each one that I wrap around. You know, I should attach that on there somehow rather than trying to hold it by hand. And we're going to go around the top and back down. Since this is wider up here, we're going to have to catch it somehow up there as well. Kind of keep it in place. Probably for now, I'm just going to keep trying to hold it in place as I go. It's going to be wrapping around and following itself right next to that original strand. Right back up. I am going to start weaving it. Now that I have two strands here, I'm going to start doing the actual weaving through, where I go over one, under one. It's a little bit different than working with leather. It's more rubbery in a lot of ways than leather is. Now I could be keeping this straight and keeping these twists out of it from the very get-go and trying to keep everything nice and neat, but right now I'm not entirely sure that I'm doing exactly what I want, so I'm just sort of working at it and I'll just straighten it out as I go. One other difference with working with rawhide as opposed to leather lace is that rawhide does shrink significantly as it dries, which leather lace, people will say it shrinks as it dries, but in my experience it doesn't shrink very much if it's a good leather. Um, as a matter of fact, I've even had it wind up loose after it's dried compared to when it was wet. But rawhide is where that idea comes from and it does shrink pretty significantly as it dries uh, not just in thickness but also it'll tighten up as it shrinks in length so you want to pull rawhide snug and get it in place but if you pull it really tight it may actually break on you as it um, shrinks there is kind of a sweet spot for working with it that I'm not at right yet. Where if you soak it and then you let it sit and dry for long enough, it becomes more leather-like to work with. But I'm not really at that point. So it should be over, under, over, under, over, then over, under, over, over and it's going to be yeah a little bit weird but pretty much i'm just going to go by what the previous strands look like next to it and try and make it look right i may have something completely messed up and i may have to take it all out and try again but more than likely i'm not going to because this is not a project that needs to come out perfect what I'm going by on all these knots is once I've 
following next to a strand, I follow it back down, and I'm looking at the strands that's crossing over, and if they're underneath, I need to go underneath of them. If they're on top of the strand that I'm following, I need to go on top of them. Because it needs to be the opposite of whatever strand I'm following next to. But in some cases, things aren't working out quite the way they're supposed to. At one point, something got off. One of the great things about rawhide is it will harden up and stay in shape and stay in place. And I'll probably be the only person that really knows where the mistakes are, except for y'all that are watching this video. There we are. Excess and this excess. Now I am going to still pound this with a mallet like I would normally do or with my cobbler's hammer, um, but then I've got to let it dry at least overnight, probably a couple days, before this really shrinks down and tightens up. But right now, while it's still pliable, I'm going to do as much shaping and forming and fiddling with it as I can because after that I'll be stuck with it. But one of the nice things is after you've got it all braided and done you can treat rawhide almost like wood. Um, it'll take clear finishes that are meant for wood like polyurethanes. Um, which is a good idea to prevent it from absorbing moisture and stretching and rotting. Okay, this has had a couple days to dry and stiffen up, shrink down a little bit. Everything's tightened up pretty good. It's going to stay in place, so I'm going to call that good enough, even though I did make some mistakes on the knot. But I'm just going to give it a coat of a spray lacquer to protect it. It won't hurt any of the metal or wood. Actually, probably good for it. To also hit all that with that, too. And one of the advantages of lacquer is that it dries really quick. So in just a few minutes, this will be done. 